up a fence. Why are you putting your fence on my property and on the wrong side of my roses? Well, I think the better question is why did you plant your roses on my property? You see, this is the property line. I own everything on this side, including these roses. You own everything on that side. That is ridiculous. You might want to check out the abstract, see? I hadn't, and when I did, I discovered that you were trying to steal some of my lawn, which shouldn't have been a surprise. You know, since the day you moved in, you have tormented me, but beware, Weber. Over the last thousand years, the Lelands have fought dozens of wars with squatters like you trying to steal our land. Well, give me a call when you win one. Gotta go, Leland. You know, I think when I finish building my fence, I have to read up on my new roses. Release the dogs of war. So this whole thing's about roses? I believe you're missing the point. This is about a despicable ne'er-do-well who has ruined my own personal neighborhood. It is about a common thief who is stealing my property in an indefensible land grab. And yes, it is about a, a, a horticulturalist wannabe who has hijacked my roses. Horticulturalist wannabe? What kind of roses? Crimson Miles roses. A hybrid he developed himself. So who's right? Where is the property line? I know where the property line is, and I'm going down to the county clerk's office today to prove that my roses and I are in the right. And when I do, he will rue the day he awoke my wrath. That's what a culturalist wannabe. What? That's ridiculous. Didn't they look at his rap sheet? Your empathy is heartwarming, really. I'll be sure to tell the family you did your best. Tony Hill is being paroled. Tony Hill? I thought he had 20 years. Which apparently in the state judicial system means five. You remember I told you about an agent that used to work with us? James Shepard? Shep, the agent who was killed? Tony Hill is the guy that killed him. Only he was never actually charged with Shep's murder. And the 20 to life that he was in for was on unrelated drug charges. You know he did it, but... You can't prove it in the court of law. Exactly. Hill was a fugitive on drug charges. Shep got a tip that Hill's cousin, low-level druggie by the name of Sal Rowland, a.k.a. Little Sal, might know where Hill was. So on July 18th, 1999, Shep went over to Little Sal's house, and he never came back from the interview. Shep was found in his bureau car the next day, 60 miles away, shot with his own gun. But neither his gun nor his badge were ever found. What about his cousin? Couldn't he have been the killer? No, he was in custody at the time. He had been picked up in New York earlier the same day, something that none of us knew when Shep went out to interview him. There were other bits of evidence pointing to Hill. A neighbor of Lil Sal's ID'd Hill as someone he'd seen staying there. And just proving Hill might have been at Sal's house isn't the same as proving he killed anybody. And since Shep was a member of our squad, we weren't allowed to handle the investigation. They just never had enough for a conviction. The pales in comparison consolation prize is that Hill was sent away for the drug charges. Now I get to go tell Shep's wife and son that the man who murdered their husband, father, will be back out on the streets tomorrow. Care for some company? It's not right, Jack. I know. My son will never have a father. And this guy gets to go back, living his life like it never happened. Hey, Andy. Hey, Jack, how's it going? Doing all right. You remember Sue Thomas? Huh? What, do you grow about an inch a week these days? <laughs> What's going on? Andy. Tony Hill is being released from prison. We came by to tell your mother. You said he'd be in jail for a long time. Not as long as we thought. The parole board's letting him out. It won't bother you. I just wanted you to hear it from me, not from the news or something. I got a lot of homework to do. If 
there's anything we can do. You can put the man who killed my husband away for good. Other than that, I don't think so. See the seven wonders That'll be alright Should my tender heart be broken I will cry those teardrops from knowing I will be just fine Cause nothing changes Clear the decks. We've got a new case for the squad. Shep's murder file? But I thought they don't let squads handle their own agents' murder cases, and you would be correct. Except in this particular instance, at this particular time. Mark Mitchell is the current case agent, and he's also currently swamped. So I made him an offer. Let us handle Shep's case. He gets the credit if, or I should say, when we convict Tony Hill. I, I don't mean to be a stick in the mud, but nobody's been able to get Tony Hill yet. Why do we think we can now? I ask myself the same question. And the answer is because we now have two things that nobody's ever had before. The first thing is that Hill and his cousin, Little Sal, will both be out of jail at the same time. Sal's out too? He's also on parole. Why do we even bother putting these guys in prison? We should just arrest them and then immediately release them. Skip that annoying middle step of the slap on the wrist prison sentence. But little Sal was interviewed five years ago. He didn't know anything about Hill killing Shep. Yeah, but that doesn't mean he can't find out now. Sal's the closest thing to a friend and family that Hill has. We need to get close to Hill. So why not use cousin Sal? And why would he turn on his cousin? Because I have information that he has been using again, which would be a violation of his parole. He gets caught, he goes back to prison for the remainder of his sentence and more. So pointing that out to him might put him in a cooperative mood. And if we pick him up quietly, he will never even know. D, you, Sue, Tara, and Lucy scour that file and see if there's anything anybody missed along the way. Or if you can, try and find a new way of looking at it, a way that nobody's ever thought of before. Ordering up some out-of-the-box thinking caps as we speak. According to this, Hill's entire living family consists of Lil Sal and Lil Sal's mom, Hattie Rowland. Now, let's not talk to her yet. Or anybody else, for that matter. I don't want to tip off anyone who might tip off Hill that we're on a full court press. You said there are two reasons we can get this guy when nobody's been able to do it before. What's the second reason? Shep was our friend, and we want it more. We all know what this one means. Let's go. Why would anyone wear a hat like that? Oh, he must think it looks good. Makes me think he choreographs for Broadway on his off hours. Oh, here we go. G'day, Sal. Funny running into you here, mate. FBI, get in. I can't help you with Tony. Oh, I don't know. To me, you look like the kind of guy that can do anything you set your mind to. And considering how close you and your cuz are, you're the perfect guy to talk to him for us. We know you were in contact with Tony when he was in prison. 
a lot. I talked to him up until a couple of months ago. Check your records. Tony and I don't talk no more. He wants us to check. Why not? He's a girlfriend of his. She and I sort of, you know, got together while he was still in the joint. Tony got wind of it, and you know Tony and his temper. I don't want to go back to prison. And even if I agreed to do whatever it is you want me to do, I'm pretty sure the last person Tony wants to see is me. So you'll just have to get back in his good graces. I'm not sure that's possible. Guess you're just gonna have to decide whether it's worth a try. He might kill me. We'll do our best to prevent that. Miscellaneous paper from dining room trash can. You can't say they weren't thorough. Little Sal rolled. By the way, he was telling the truth. He hasn't had contact with Hill in some time. I figured he was. It's something that's too easy to check. Well, he's gonna contact him now. Jack was so good, I was ready to flip. How's it going here? I've gone through every bit of this evidence log. It pretty much falls under the category of not doing much of anything to help our case. All I've discovered is either Sal or Hill was addicted to ice cream sandwiches. I'll meet you in the parking lot of the soccer field in half an hour. I'll bring the cash, you bring the proof. What'd you do, Miles? Take out a hit on your neighbor? No, just his fence. It's gone. Did he say the fence was gone? He did. What is that? Code or something? Yes, it's code for I have checked with the county records, and the fence, the one that separated me from my prize roses, has been removed. What'd your neighbor say about that? Well, according to my handyman, quite a lot. Apparently, it was quite a snapshot into the man's dark psyche. Very sad and disturbing. <laughs> But this is a time for rejoicing. I may even bring you ladies one of the first bloomings off my Crimson Miles beauties. You are talking about flowers, aren't you? Thanks. That was SOG. Tony Hill is out and just walked into the rib joint on 5th. Tony's just finished eating half a buffet, so he should be happy and slow. You go around that corner and you'll have a nice family reunion in about half a block or so. Talking to himself? He's giving him stuff for pep talk. Watching too much Dr. Phil. Tony. Hey, man. Heard you're getting out. How's it going, Sam? Good. Good. It's going good. I uh, didn't expect to see you like this. I was going to call. I wanted to set something up. You know? Apologize for... Uh, Sal's apologizing for the little incident with Tony's girlfriend. <clears throat> Don't worry about it. She'll be coming a pain It'll in. Be a pain in the. Good. Listen, can I give you a call? I got some people that I think you should meet. You know, get you reconnected. I'll think about it. Okay. Sal said he could help Tony get reconnected, and Tony said he'll think about it. So everything seems cool between them? Nobody's killed anybody yet. That's just right. All right, boys and girls. A uh, Mr. Carey is on his way over to see some lucky agent in our unit. And who, pray tell, is Mr. Carey? The friendly neighborhood Bix investigator. Bix? Background investigations contract service. Retired agents who do the background investigations on new agents and then every five years reinvestigate current agents. To make sure no shady shenanigans have crept into play. Pass, you get another five years at the FBI. You fail, you end up the best dressed person on the unemployment line. Excuse me, I'm looking for Miles Leyland. Yes. Just glad it's not me. I'm, uh, I'm Miles Leland. You must be uh, Mr. Carey. Yeah, that's correct. I see my reputation preceded me, but have no fear. I'm on your side. Oh. <laughs> Unless, of course, I find information that tells me I shouldn't be. Uh, yes, well, I don't believe that will be the case. Good. I'll need you to fill out this full background paperwork as soon as you can and give it back to me. I need to have a quick word with your supervisor. 
I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Ah, yes, the combination mortgage application, medical history, and term paper. Like I don't have enough paperwork already, I have to remember every move I made for the last five years. You're squeaky clean, you'll do fine. So what if they poke and pry? Check every financial record, all your work records, interview your friends, your family. Your neighbors. Neighbors? Weber. They interview your neighbors? Totally. That's a big one. What are they looking for? Erratic behavior like feuding over a fence or any other number of things. Because you have a lousy neighbor you don't get along with, it could cost you your job? Mm. Well, not me, because I get along with all my neighbors, but uh, maybe Miles. Weber hates me. Who knows what he might say about me? This is really just an unfortunate misunderstanding. Certainly two grown men, such as you and I, can resolve our differences amicably. With that, I would like to extend a heartfelt apology for what might have been mistakenly seen as me being less than, shall we say, neighborly. Too bad Levi is not your neighbor. He seemed to be buying it. Unfortunately, Weber is far less sophisticated and civilized than Levi. Nevertheless, I am prepared to try to reach some sort of amicable gentleman's agreement with him. Preferably before he talks to Carrie. Unfortunately, I've been unable to get a hold of him. I think he's avoiding me. Oh, I don't know why he'd do that. What with all the two of you have meant to each other? Okay, folks, here's where we are. Little Sal has set up a meeting with Hill so that he can present Hill with an offer that he won't be able to refuse. Needless to say, it's less than legal. Little Sal's an entrepreneur. Gotta love America. Our number one desired goal is to get Hill to talk about Shep's murder. If that fails, we'll at least be in a position to put Hill away for a long time based on new charges. Now, Lucy, Tara, you've been going through the old evidence? We've been working on it as if it's new. One piece seems to be missing. What's that? The theory always was that Hill killed Shep, put him into Shep's car, drove the body to the woods, abandoned the car, then either walked or hitchhiked back. If he walked out of the woods and back to his own car, it's possible there's physical evidence in it. A hair, a speck of blood. Only one problem. When Hill was arrested on drug charges, his car was nowhere to be found. So what do we reckon? He ditched it? That's what they figured at the time. They looked for it, but never found it. Maybe he sold it. If he did sell it for anything but parts, it would have to be registered to someone else, which it never was. I don't think he ditched it. He was always scrounging around for money. Mm. Salvage yard, maybe? Is that your final answer? You've just advanced to the next level. I entered the license plate number of Hill's car into our computer and ran it against the salvage yard records that were available from that time. There were no matches. At that point, we thought we'd struck out. We figured it had gone to one of those salvage yards that didn't have their records computerized. But then Lucy had a great thought. If you're entering license plate numbers all day, how easy would it be for some of those numbers to get transposed? So I had the computer run different combinations of Hill's license number, and guess what? Bridgeland Towing and Salvage. Nice work. You always take me to the nicest places. There she is, so to speak. See, cars like this, demand outstrips supply. It's a seller's market, I can tell you that. So much for finding anything here. Never give up. The lab can pull fingerprints off of a cat. Who's your supplier? He's a friend. Uh... He's your cellmate from the joint. Haven't you even been listening? I know that. I'm just a little rattled. He runs a meth operation, and, and he's let me in on it. How's business going? I'm making like obscene money. My supplier needs more people, and I can pick whoever I want. And why did you call Tony? Well, because I, uh, I want to help out my cousin, because we're close, and I'm trying to patch things up with him. Good. Very good. <sighs> now, remember, you don't have to close a deal today. What we need out of this meeting is another meeting. You don't want to scare him away. But what if he doesn't go for it? Well, you better hope he goes for it. 
It'll go fine. You're ready. <laughs> I'm a wreck. You're good. You can do this. Can we change, mate? You smell. This time he's telling him stuff. You're good. You can do it. Must have been part of a prison self-help group. Here we are. Bill's entering stage left. Sal says. Here's the deal. I got something that can make us a little bit of bank. Get us back on our feet. Minimum risk. I'm listening. I met this guy on the inside. He's got a little business. Cooking up crank with his uh, brother-in-law. So while he's doing his nickel, the brother-in-law's running the operation. But he only knows how to mix up the meth. So uh, he can't handle the business side. That's where we come in. I just got out. And I don't even know these clowns. You call that minimum risk? You call that minimum risk? Look alive, everybody. We're sliding sideways here. Oh, bro, I just got out too. I'm not planning a return visit. But I'm not planning on starving either. Look, I just wanted to hook you up. But if you're not down... If you're not down, that's cool. Let's do it. Hill says let's do it. Maybe that self-help stuff works. Looks like we're in business. He was talking about moving. They say Costa Rica is the new Hawaii. Come visit me. I've never been to the old Hawaii. I'd say along with all of his other fine qualities, Hill's just become an official flight risk. Let's get that lab made up and jump on this right away. So, Mr. Carey, uh, do I start circling employment opportunities in the proverbial classifieds, or uh, have I lived to fight another day? Believe it or not, a lot of people had a lot of good things to say about you. Oh. <laughs> However, you do have a problem with one of your neighbors. Neighbors? Uh, Mr. Weber. Some of the things he told me, well, let's just say they were less than flattered. Yes, well, Mr. Weber... He mentioned that you are currently in a boundary dispute? As a matter of fact, I have looked into Mr. Weber's allegations, and they are completely unfounded. You see, it all stands... Let me give you a word of advice. You are an FBI agent, not a cab driver. You can't afford the kinds of misunderstandings others might have. I mean, yes, I, I realize that... I would patch things up if I were you. It's exactly the kind of thing that could come back to bite you. However, I don't see it as quite enough to hold up your renewed status at this time. So, I'm in the clear? Well, officially, not yet. I'm still waiting for a couple of documents to arrive, follow-up paperwork. But if it's all in order, which I expect it should be, you should be good to go for another five years. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Although I must say, I was never really concerned. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they all say. The neighbor nearly sunk you. I'd fix that problem. It could next time. <sighs> hey guys, some interesting news. The lab found blood in Hill's old car. But it's not Shep's. Whose is it? We ran it against the National DNA Index System. It matched a woman named Larissa Pickett. She was killed in May of 1999. And her murder was never solved. There's a twist I never saw coming. I'm beginning to think Hill doesn't play well with others. Maybe this is finally making some sense. Did they ever have any suspects? I don't have anything that says they did. Her body wasn't found until June, near a creek in rural Maryland. It had been there a while. No physical evidence leads. Well, she was killed a couple of months before Shep. Which means Hill would have had that dirty little fact on his dance card when Shep went to interview him. He was afraid we were on to him for the murder of the girl. We never understood why Hill would murder Shep over a modest drug charge. It just didn't make sense. But if Hill thought Shep was there to arrest him for a murder... Hill would have had a real motive. Maybe Cousin Sal knows something about the girlfriend. Don't know without asking. Yeah. 
I remember her, sort of. Care to be more specific? She's one of Tony's girlfriends. Larissa something was her name. Do you know who killed her? Didn't know somebody did. A little over five years ago. Wondered why she stopped coming around. When did Hill stop seeing her? Before he went away, I guess. You ever say anything about him? No. But he wouldn't. He never talked to me about his women. What a gentleman. Can't wait to meet him. Leland, what do you want? I come in a spirit of reconciliation. I'm willing to put our past difficulties behind us if you are. Afraid I'm not, Leland. <laughs> no, and frankly, I'm getting a little tired of that smug attitude of yours. In fact, I'll accept nothing less than my fence to go back up in the exact same spot it was before on your side of my new red roses. But, Tom, may I call you Tom? No, save it. Just put my fence back up, Leland. Very well, Weber. But allow me to point out yet again that the property map clearly shows that I am the true owner of that land. Doesn't matter. You see, I've got something that'll trump that. Yeah, I found out about that little problem you had with a worker who removed my fence. And it seems you hired an illegal alien. I think that nice man from the FBI who was asking questions about you, uh, Mr. Carey, I think his name was, well, he'll be very interested to hear that you hired an undocumented worker to do odd jobs around your home. Look, I seem to recall several high-ranking law enforcement officials getting done in by exactly the same thing. If he was illegal. He was. And lucky for you, I didn't know that when I spoke to that nice Mr. Carey, but he did leave me his card, and he told me to call him if I thought of anything else I hadn't already told him. Of course, there is a way I might be convinced to keep this between the two of us. What do you want? My fence back up in the original location put there by your own two hands. Hmm. And please, try to keep the noise down. I like to rest on my weekends. <laughs> So now we want Tony Hill for two murders, Sheps and Larissa Pickett. Our evidence on the Pickett case is circumstantial at best. Dee's right. We don't want to take him down until we know we can keep him down. We've still got Sal worming his way into Hill's good graces. Maybe this just gives him another topic of discussion. And besides, I love playing drug dealers. Good. And we stay on course, which means we pick up Sal in an hour, follow him over to Hill's, where Sal will introduce Hill to our very own in-house reprobate. We have rigged a garage over on 12th Avenue. It's decorated in early American meth lab. Of course, with the addition of a few well-placed video cams and microphones. How is Sal holding up? He's frayed around the edges. The less we use him in this operation, the better. You all know the drill, boys and girls. Hey, what's going on with your neighbor? Are you guys sharing chips and dips over a ball game this weekend? Yes, again. You know why it's always better to take the high road? Why? There's less traffic. What? Oh, man. Yeah. Thanks. SOG just found Sal in his hotel room, dead, from a drug overdose. The hotel maid slipped it in with the fresh towels. They figure Sal gave her some cash to deliver the package. That's the only way he could get it by our agents. So now what? I still got a meeting set up with Tony. Just no Sal. That's like bluffing with a seven eye. I talked to the Maryland DA earlier this morning. We've got a hip pocket warrant for Tony's arrest on the murder of Larissa Pickett. We want to use it. He was very clear. He said our case was weak, but real enough that he gave us a warrant. It's even weaker now that Sal's not around to testify. That's about all we got. You're Hill. I'm Bobby. Got the wrong corner, pal. Have a nice day. Sal was supposed to be here to uh, introduce us, but there was a problem. Then that's a problem for you. If Sal ain't here, I'm not interested in whatever you're selling. Tell Sal to set it up again when his schedule clears up. Look, the truth is, Sal's baggage anyway. Doesn't mean we can't do business.
You didn't buy, pick him up. FBI, don't move! Oh, please try to run. Give me just a hint of a reason. You're under arrest. For what? For the murder of Larissa Pickett. Come on, give me hands. So Miles is going to put the fence in by himself? And we're all going to watch. Don't tell him. We're setting up a pool to see how long it lasts. You want in? Is five minutes still available? <laughs> how could you take a meeting like that without contacting us? What's going on? She's talking to the DA prosecuting Hill's case. Oh, I know you have the authority, but we're the ones that handed you the case. We're coming over to talk about this right now. The DA just met with Hill's defense attorney. They've agreed to a plea on the case. <sighs> which includes bail. What? Oh, she can't. Oh. I had no choice. It's the only way he'd go for a plea. Of course, because he doesn't plan on being at the trial. He will take any deal you give him as long as it includes bail. Look, Jack, like I told you from the start, you have a poor chance for a conviction. But we have a chance. If he's in jail in the meantime, it gives us the opportunity to strengthen our cases on both the murders we now know he's committed. I know what's at stake. So, can you reject the plea? Only if you bring me new evidence. The arraignment's at 2 o'clock. If you don't have anything else, he's going to walk out on bail. Listen up, everybody. We have got until 2 o'clock this afternoon to find something else on Hill or he's walking out on bail. At which point, he'll no doubt don a snappy pair of Bermuda shorts and walk out of the country as well. Mm. Is there a time for a Hail Mary pass? This is it. This might qualify. Sue found something. I think I know where Hill might have been hiding for a few days after Shep was killed. It's a purchase invoice from a building supply store, paid for with the credit card of Tony Hill's aunt and little Sal's mother, Hattie Rowland. Dated the day after the murder. But this is Hattie's signature. How does it help us pinpoint Hill's whereabouts? Because the signature isn't hers. As you can see, it doesn't match these, which we know are hers. Which means somebody else signed a name. The signature on the invoice matches Tony's handwriting. But I reviewed the aunt's original interview. She said she never saw Hill in the days after Shep's murder. Why did she lie? Well, what else might she know that she's not telling anyone? Mrs. Roll? Yes? I'm Jack Hudson, and this is Sue Thomas. We're with the FBI. I just lost my boy because of you people. The least you could do is leave me in peace. Ma'am, we could get a warrant, but we were hoping we wouldn't have to. Mrs. Rowland, we tried to help Sal. He was trying to help us, too. We know Tony Hill signed a credit card receipt for a delivery here on July 19th, 1999 the day after Agent Shepard was murdered. Why did you tell investigators at the time that you hadn't seen him? I don't know nothing about credit cards. We know Tony was here. Hattie, I'm sorry about that. But you need to know that before he died, he was trying to do the right thing. And I think it meant a lot to him. You could help him finish what he started. We know you're hurting. But there's another family that's been hurting for five years. They're friends of mine. And they had a young father and husband taken from them by Tony. I love my son. He was a good boy until Tony started down the wrong road and took Sal with him. That's when he got mixed up with those drugs. I wanted to tell somebody five years ago. He said he would kill me if I ever told anybody. I walked into the guest room. I didn't even know he was there. He was holding a gun and a badge.
I never asked him about him. Because I knew. Do you know what he did with them? Never saw him again. Next day he helped me lay my patio as if it never happened. Never spoke another word about it. Then I lied to the FBI about him being here. He helped you lay your patio. Bobby, I need you to buy us some time. Get to the courthouse and find any excuse you can to get Hill's case pushed to the bottom of the docket. We may have a lead on what he did with Shep's gun and badge. I know, boy. Hopefully it's not too much longer. Better not be. We're running out of patio. Yeah. We're working on it. Not the answer I wanted to hear. DA says we've run out of wiggle room. We're up next, mate. Yeah, do what you can. It's over. Bobby's walking into the courtroom now. You did your best. Not good enough. What if we bring in Hattie? Use her testimony. It won't help us to deny bail on the Larissa Pickett case. Hattie doesn't know anything about that. The truth is, without the physical evidence, it's not going to do any good anyway. That's if we even find Hill once he's in the Bahamas or someplace. Jack, take a look at this. Cement. You suppose they did this at the same time as the patio? Addy! So, I understand we have a plea agreed to by both sides and that there is a bail recommendation as part of that plea. The state believes that reasonable bail is appropriate in this matter. And I'm sure the defense has no objection to that? No, Your Honor. What does the state have in mind? Whose ever phone that is will write a check to this court for $100 before they leave here. If you answer that, I will have you removed. Go. Bobby, we found the gun and badge. We're on our way. Tell them to hold off for 10 more minutes. That's it. Remove this man at once. Well, uh, yeah, you know, I'll do my best, but, but quick, quicker would be better. Uh, Marie. Good advice, 10 more minutes, OK? It's all right. Miss Leverton, must I remind you, this is a court of law, specifically my court of law. Your Honor, the people request a 10-minute recess. Your Honor, this is ridiculous. They've been delaying all day. We have a plea agreement. I see no reason why we should delay this proceeding any further. Well, thank you for the unsolicited advice, Counselor, but I will decide what is ridiculous and what is not. It's the end of a long day. My patience is wearing thin. Is it absolutely necessary? Your Honor, there is new evidence that very well may have a bearing on the plea agreement. Are you saying you're pulling the plea? I'm simply asking for 10 minutes. Very well. It had better be good, Counselor. Well, this whole thing is very unusual. Somebody want to tell me what's going on? Your meeting, Jack. What's this? Do you want to tell him, Tony, or should I? How should I know? That is Special Agent James Shepard's gun and badge, all perfectly preserved from being buried in Hattie Rowland's backyard swing foundation. And this somehow has something to do with my client in this case? No, with your client, definitely. But this is a whole new case. I don't know what you're talking about, man. I don't know nothing about nothing. Quite. What does this have to do with our plea bargain? Well, actually, nothing. And this 10-minute recess is over. Fine, you can have your plea bargain on the Larissa Pickett murder. But you might want to take a minute and ask your friend Tony here, whose fingerprints he thinks are found all over this gun and badge. It's over, Tony. Before you even get bail, you are going to be rearrested. The paperwork charging you with the death of Special Agent James Shepard is being drawn up as we speak.
I need to work with my attorney. What's on the table here? Only the U.S. attorney can agree to a deal. But this is my case. I could go to him and recommend life without parole instead of the death penalty, but I'm not going to do that. Not without a written confession in my hand to back it up. Don't give me too long to ponder it, boys. The thought of it alone is making me nauseous. Judge wants you in there. Now. It's your call, Tony. Tell the judge we're on our way, but we're going to recommend no bail. Start running. I want details. Leland, what are you doing? Oh, I've changed my mind about building your fence. Are you losing it? You, you know what this means, right? No. And uh, more to the point, I believe you've lost it. Your cable TV, I mean. About 10 minutes ago, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I was digging for a fence pole. Accidentally cut this. I, I don't suppose you'd know anything about your house being hooked up to my cable feed, would you? I think carefully before I answer that. Any statements you make can and will be used against you in a court of law. Are you aware of the penalties for stealing a signal? Officially, we call it interference with interstate commerce, but in this case, I guess we could just call it Weber's building the fence now. Oh. Make sure you put it on the right side of the roses this time, Weber, and uh, try to keep it down. I like to relax on the weekends. It's finally over. And he's never getting out, right? Right. I believe Jack has something to give you. I think your dad would have wanted you to have that. Thanks. Maybe you'll want to wear it yourself someday. I was thinking about it. Shepard, FBI. I like that. I'll be at the firing range next week. Never too early to start practicing. Give you some pointers. Or you could learn from someone who really knows how to shoot. I'll be there Thursday. I like to learn from the best. What day is Levi going to be there? Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs>